I recently ran across an uh, interesting puzzle online called the Two Envelope Paradox. And here's how it goes. You start with two envelopes, label them A and B, and we're told that one of the envelopes contains twice as much money as the other. Nobody knows which envelope has more money than the other, though. We're allowed to, to choose whichever one we like, and it seems on the face of it that it makes sense to just pick randomly because who knows which has more money. Uh, we're then allowed to swap. Um, so if we picked envelope A, we're allowed to swap it later for envelope B, but still nobody has any in new information about what's in either envelope, so on the face of it, it seems like it doesn't really make any difference whether you swap or don't, and if we do a quick analysis of a probability tree, we'll find out that that's true. Uh, so if we say that um, the lesser envelope has a value of x and the greater has a value of twice that, 2x, then we can quickly create a probability tree that will uh, show us that it doesn't really make a difference whether we switch or not. When we make our first choice, we're either going to choose the envelope with x dollars in it or the envelope with 2x dollars in it. Then we have a choice. We can either switch or not switch. If we choose to switch and we chose the original lesser envelope, then that'll wind up being a good choice. We'll get twice as much money. If we choose to not switch, then uh, we'll keep our original x dollars. If instead we had originally chosen the greater amount, if we switch, we'll wind up with less money. And if we choose to not switch, we'll wind up with the same amount of money. So is it advantageous to switch or not switch? Well, we'll find out by looking at the amount of money that we gain. So in the first case, where we started with x and uh, switched to twice x, we got twice x, but in the process, we gave up x. And so we have a gain of x dollars. In the case below that, we switched, or we chose not to switch, and kept x dollars. In this example, we gave up x dollars to do that, so we gain nothing by not switching, which seems obvious. In the second case, where we start with the larger envelope, though, and we switch, we get the lesser envelope, and in the process of doing that, we had to give up the greater envelope, and so we have a gain of negative x dollars, or a loss of x dollars. And in the final case where we don't switch, we keep the larger envelope, and we gave up the larger envelope to keep the larger envelope, or that's, that's a change of nothing. So as we look at these possibilities, we have even odds of getting nothing, nothing, x, or a loss of x. And so we can see that, that whether we switch or we, if, if we don't switch, we stand to gain nothing. And if we switch, we have even odds of gaining and losing the same amount of money. Now, where the paradox comes in it is in the way that people choose to think about this problem. Uh, so to illustrate this, there's another situation over here. In this case, we already have an envelope. We'll call it envelope A. Some guy comes along and says, hey, here's another envelope. There's a 50-50 chance that it contains either twice the amount of money in your envelope or half the amount of money in your envelope. Would you like to, to trade with me? And so in this case, we'll say that uh, we start with a certain amount of money. We'll, we'll call it x. And uh, so here's our x dollars. And we have a choice. We can either switch, in which case we'll get, uh, sorry, if we choose to switch, we'll get either 2x dollars or half x dollars. And so in this case, our gain um, is going to be 2x, take away what we had to give up, which was x dollars, for a gain of x dollars, or we'll get half x dollars, take away what we originally had, for a loss of one half x dollars. Now, in this case, it makes sense to switch because you stand to gain more than you lose and there's even odds of both. So we're gonna gain x or lose half x. So this seems a bit odd. It seems like it conflicts with what we found um, in the previous example of the two envelopes. If we just pretend that we had envelope A in our hands, we know that envelope B has either twice as much or half as much as A, it seems like this mysterious stranger is holding envelope B in front of us and saying, would you like twice as much money or half as much money? There's even odds of both. 
And so we can try to analyze the two envelope situation in the same way. And we're going to find that actually there is no paradox here. So if um, we start with envelope A, we can switch. And if we say there's even odds of having twice as much money after we switch, then we're going to get either twice A or we're going to get one half A. So we're holding envelope A in our hands. We can swap it for envelope B, which contains either twice as much money or half as much money as envelope A. This looks exactly like the situation that we had with our stranger. Uh, and so on the face of it, it appears that we have a paradox where it both makes sense to switch and makes no sense to switch. But there's something else going on here. In this situation where we have the two envelopes, the situation where we gain twice as much money and the situation where we lose half of our money cannot both be true simultaneously. Let's take a look at the reason for that. There, there's another case here. There's the case where we have envelope B in our hands. And if we have envelope B in our hands and we switch, we can either gain twice B or we can get half B. We stand to gain certain amounts of money here. Um, in the first case, where we get 2A and we spent A, we gain A. In the second case, we lose half A. In the third case, we gain B. And in the fourth case, uh, we lose half B. But like I was saying before, these two situations here and these two situations here can't both be true. If we're going to get twice A from envelope A, that must mean that the second envelope has twice as much money. It must mean that twice A is equal to envelope B. It, it means that the second envelope has to have twice as much money. In the second case, where we get half as much money, it means that the second envelope must have half as much money, or 2B equals A. Continuing downwards, in this case, if we have um, twice as much money after we give up envelope B, that must mean that B has half as much money as A, or uh, 2B equals A. And finally, in the last case, if we give up B and get half as much money, that means that A must have half as much money as B, or uh, 2A equals B. These two conditions and these two conditions are not both true for values of A and B greater than zero. And so really, we have two tracks here. We can go this way, where, a is, where twice A is B, or this way. But once we get to B, there's only one path to follow, given that twice A is B. Or we can get twice B is A, or twice B is A. But the decision by the time we get to B is already made for us, by the decision that we made up above. So there really isn't a branch here. There's really two probability trees superimposed on each other. By the time you've gotten to this position here, the choice is already made. There's only one way that you can go, and it's determined by the choice that you made back here. Now just to drive the point home, we're going to take a look at the gains that we make. Um, and we're going to find that even though it looks like it makes sense to always switch in both cases, it in fact uh, doesn't make a difference. And the reason is because of this, these conditions on these branches. So in the case where we have a gain of b, we know that 2b is equal to a. And therefore, we can say that our gain of b is really a gain of 1 half a. And in this case, where we lose half of b, we know that 2a is equal to b. And so what we can say here is um, we'll substitute in b for 2a, we'll get negative 2 times 2 is negative 1, and we'll have a gain of negative a. So in the cases where 2b was equal to a, we have potential gains of minus 1 half a and plus 1 half a. And in the cases where 2a was equal to b, we have gains of a or minus a. So in either case, when we choose to switch, we have even odds of gaining and losing the same amount of money. The paradox, or the apparent paradox here, comes from uh, not recognizing that both of these branches are not possible at the same time.